Hey guys, Andrarchy here, and today I want to talk about arguing from first principles, specifically applying first principles logic to the field of economics. As inquisitive beings, we try to understand the world. We experience things with respect to which we lack understanding, and then we come up with theories in an attempt to gain understanding. But we don't know whether these theories are true when we create them. And in order to investigate the theory, we therefore have to be open to the possibility that they are true. We have to be willing to go down that rabbit hole. That's kind of the natural order of being human. This is how we discover new information. People, at least innovators, have to open their mind to new possibilities. Things they don't know to be true or false. They have to entertain any theory, no matter where it comes from, if they want to maximize their odds of uncovering truth, of uncovering something new, new information. They have to venture into the unknown. The problem with that is that many get lost along the way and then need to be reminded of reality. That there are things everyone believes, which they have lost sight of. This is what Elon Musk is talking about when he talks about reasoning from first principles. He's talking about those foundational facts we all agree on. With both SpaceX and Tesla Motors, instead of looking at how much their competitors spent making their product and basing their decisions on that, they simply ask the questions, what are the parts and how much do they cost? So, so first principles would be to say, okay, what are the material constituents of the batteries? Mm -hmm. What is the spot market value of the material constituents? So you can say, okay, it's got cobalt, nickel, aluminum, carbon, um, and some polymers for separation and a seal can. But Musk recently took it to the next level on a truly massive scale. He applied what I refer to as first principles logic to the issue of manufacturing and followed that logic all the way to the creation of one of the largest scale endeavors in the history of mankind. You see, Tesla Motors was faced with a problem. Their cars have a lot of batteries in them. So many, in fact, that in order to satisfy the demand for their next car, the Model 3, they would need every single factory in the world that is capable of making lithium-ion cells, the factories making the batteries in your laptops, in your cell phones, in your cameras. They would need all of those factories to stop what they're doing and just make cells for them, for their cars. They would basically need civilization to, gr to grind to a halt. They needed a lot of batteries. How do you make a lot of batteries? Well, you make a big factory. If all of the factories in the world can't make enough cells for your product, what do you do? Well, you have to build your own factory, and that factory is gonna have to be big. It has to be big, because the world is big. But once they made the decision, to build the factory, what they called the Gigafactory, they didn't just stop applying first principles logic. What they understood is that human beings create products. That's what we do. A car is a product. A plane is a product. A factory is a product. So if you can make a great product like the Model S, again, using first principles logic, foundationally, then why would you ignore all of the val valuable lessons you learned from that experience when building your next product, which is a factory? And the answer is you wouldn't. When they announced the Gigafactory, a factory unlike any other in history, the largest building by footprint in the world capable of producing more battery cells than every other factory on Earth combined, the reaction was the same as always. There they go again, biting off more than they can chew. And yet when they announce 
that by using first principles logic, they have innovated their way to being able to triple their originally obscene estimate, there's almost a resigned acceptance. Even the skeptics seem to accept that though they don't understand it, Tesla's magic never seems to wear off. That's because they fail to see the value, the power of first principles logic. What I believe I have always understood, albeit unconsciously, but that Musk has raised to the level of conscious awareness, is that applying first principles logic can shed light on any inquiry. So the question I want to ask is, what if we applied it to economics? So I've developed a little game for myself, which is that I'm going to go over to my whiteboard and without looking at any textbooks, without Googling anything, without looking at Wikipedia, I am going to write down what I believe to be the first principles of economics. Let's see how it goes. I have, I have no idea what is even going to come out, whether it's going to be any good or not, but we'll find out together. Bang, bang. Come on, come on, turn the radio on, it's Friday night. Well, believe it or not, that is actually my idea of a really good time. That was, that was super fun. And it, it worked. I'm very happy with how it came out. Now, that doesn't mean that this is perfect, <laughs> that these are the first principles of economics. No, they're just a starting point, and I hope going forward to refine these even further and boil them down even further. You might have seen that as I was writing them down, they, they would start out longer, and I would uh, <laughs> erase and then try to shorten them up, tighten them up, boil them down even further to their bare essence. And you also might have noticed that I did a lot of <laughs> erasing just to make it look better. Uh, I just, it, it was just annoying to, to look at it and see lines on a diagonal or to see the font kind of change over time. So uh, some of the revisions were, were mainly aesthetic, but, uh, but most of them were uh, refining the language and trying to boil it down even further. And I, one thing I really want to make clear here is that this is not an attempt to dumb down economics. Not at all. In fact, the exact opposite. What I hoped would happen was that by arguing from first principles and looking at the fundamental truths that we all believe to be true, that we would cover uh, complex economic concepts, but in terms, phrases, concepts that ordinary people understand. I do, not, I, I do not believe that in order to understand things, you have to use jargon. That is one of my first principles. That is a foundational belief of mine, and it has never been proven wrong. Anything that can be explained using jargon can be explained to ordinary people using ordinary language. There's nothing inherently better about confusing language. That is an arbitrary cultural distinction. So this was a test of that theory, and I'm, at, I'm very happy with how it came out. I think this is super cool. And, and as proof of that, um, I'll draw your attention to the last two points that uh, the more stuff you want, money enables you to get, the more valuable it becomes. This, what, what, what this sentence describes is deflation. 
This is how deflation happens. Now, I'm not saying deflation is good or bad. Undoubtedly, people will comment saying, you're saying deflation is bad. Deflationary currencies have never been tried. They're not even wrong. They're completely off topic. I'm not saying deflation is good or bad. I'm saying that deflation is what happens when money enables you to buy more stuff you want. And inflation is the opposite. The less stuff you want money enables you to get, the less valuable it becomes. That's inflation. And with respect to whether this is dumbed down or sophisticated, I'll just say that in my opinion, if you understand, if you understand all of this and you understand these last two things, you now understand inflation and deflation better than any academic economist, any central banker who believes that what determines the value of a currency is how much of it you print. There are countless people who believe that, and it's because they do not understand that the value of money is determined by how much stuff you want it enables you to get. All right, I hope you guys found this entertaining, enjoyable, informative. If you have any suggestions, any ways uh, we can condense this even further, um, certainly if you have any proof that one of these claims is false, uh, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see evidence to that. I'd love to see some kind of study or um, logical argument that disproves one of these claims. And at the very least, if, it, if the logic is sound, uh, I'll at least add it to the post so that people can make up their minds for themselves. Hey buddy, you want in on this? I think that's a perfectly fine way to end this video. See ya.